Welcome to Big Blend Radio's California Sequoia Country Show, home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks, Giant Sequoia National Monument and Sequoia National Forest, and the charming historic agricultural communities that make up Tulare County. Hey, everybody, you know, it is the first Thursday of the month, and it's the first Thursday of January 2024. How exciting is that? And we're going to go to uh, California Sequoia Country. You know this region, home to Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Park, uh, Sequoia National Forest, Giant Sequoia National Monument, and all these amazing communities, agricultural communities, and historic communities that make up Tulare County. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to celebrate agriculture. Um, it's winter now, but just in about a month and a month and a half, you're going to start seeing uh, all these beautiful trees start to bloom uh, down the month, maybe in April, you'll start to see, uh, you know, there's the nut trees in bloom, and then you get the orange blossoms that come out in, you know, spring. So now is a good time to start planning your agricultural adventure, especially if you have kids, so they can see where our food comes from. And so we're going to start our conversation off. We've got Two ladies joining us from the Sequoia Tourism Council, and I encourage you to go to their website, uh, discoverthesequoias.com. We have Donette Silva Carter. She is a director of Tulare Chamber of Commerce. So welcome back, Donette. How are you? I am doing great. Happy New Year to everyone. It's been wonderful to step into a fresh new year, and I'm really looking forward to all that 2024 has to offer. And And it's great to start this new year in this chat. I agree. I agree. And to talk about food and, you know, because we're all trying to be healthy, right? In the new year, we're like, we better start eating our fruit and vegetables. So Tulare County is a good place to get that inspiration and maybe stick to um, your 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 health plans. But they do have chocolate, too. I'm just saying. Um, so you get to be <laughs> naughty, too. Uh, we have Suzanne Bianco from Visit Visalia here, too. And you can go to visitvisalia.com. All the links we talk about are in the show notes. But welcome back, Suzanne. How are you? I'm well. As I'm great, fantastic. Happy New Year to you um, and your family. Thank you. You too. Happy New Year to our audience. Um, I'm excited to talk about farming and agriculture because our farmers do so much work. And um, I think Donette, we always talk about you guys being the breadbasket of the country around the world. Um, how many crops are we at? Do you think when you when you oh put my it all gosh. together? Um, somewhere around 300. I know that what we do is we ship a little over 90 um, that go overseas. So our um, feeding the world is definitely very, very true. We just received the rankings probably a couple months ago and heard from our ag commissioner reporting to us. And we were number one in the United States and which essentially means number one in the world in ag production here in Tulare County. And what's always interesting is a county to the south and a county to the north, the three of us always run one, two, three in the world. And so basically, we absolutely feed the world here out of Tulare County as well as out of Kern County and Fresno County. But we're number one in Tulare County, and you can pretty much find it all grown or raised here. Mm. And grown and raised because you, your cattle is also – so you've got milk. You've got like Rosa Brothers. Uh, we got to give a shout-out to them because they make the most delicious ice cream ever. Um, and that's farm fresh ice cream, right? And you can go to their store and they also have a lot of local, locally crafted, um, you know, artisan, uh, gifts in their store too. But they represent, you know, like Bravo Farms represents, you know, the, the cheese industry too. So that's, those are a couple of examples for the dairy, right? Oh, yeah, and there are many, many more when you take a look at the other processors that we have in the area as well, Um, so many different types of national brands and then products that are branded for others as well. But we have um, everything from our um, Lactalis, which is an international uh, processor, and they have the craft brand here in our area. We have Land O'Lakes, so we've got Mm -hmm. cheese, butter, also, they produce, you know, the powdered milk as well, some, some of the best flavored hot chocolates you'll ever find here. You, get, you can buy those packets. 
and of course um, the cheeses as well with Saputo and others that are in this region. So a lot of food processing, a lot of dairy, of course. Uh, dairy is our number one uh, crop here in Tulare County, and we are the largest uh, dairy producing region in the world as well. I know a wow. lot of people assume it's a, a, probably a different state in the U.S., but it is actually Tulare County, and we have a lot wow. of dairies, and um, it's you know, it's wonderful. I, that's one of the things we were just um, at a meeting where some folks were kind of giggling when they were talking about how people come into the area to visit. And they literally will say, hey, where can I find the cows? Because I haven't seen cows. We want to go see real cows and take mm. pictures and, um, you know, take a look at the trees, too. What's growing? And soon we have the blossoms coming. So we get a lot of questions on, well, what kind of tree is this? You know, what's mm. what's it going to be? <laughs> what are we going to find, you know, growing on that tree when these blossoms turn into nuts or whatever it is going to be? So it's really cool. I think we're uh, very fortunate to live um, in an area with all of this beautiful farmland. I'm excited because I think Nancy and I drive down from, we're in Oregon right now, and I think we drive down through your area in um, you know, the, the nut blossom time. And I wanted to go to uh, Suzanne over in Visalia on this because I remember, is John still there with Naturally Nuts going into his shop where he really gives you an education on all the different nuts that are grown in um, the area in Tulare County as well as around the world, actually. But um, yeah, do you, when when do those flowers start coming out your way? Yeah. Uh, well, first of all, John is an outstanding resource. He's an amazing person. His family's been farming uh, nuts, growing nuts here in California for a long time. And so he's very knowledgeable. And if you stop by his shop, Naturally Nuts, and happen to catch him in, he will um, regale you with lots of great stories and information about the you know things that grow here in the Central Valley. But yeah, coming up soon in around mid-February, all of the nuts and stone fruit starts to blossom. So it sort of uh, blankets the the orchards with the pink and white um, blossoms and it's a beautiful beautiful um, sight to see people come from all over to take their pictures um, you know at the edge of the um, at the edge of the orchards and flowers and blossom is amazing we have a little blossom trail map that people can uh, download from the Visit Visalia website <clears throat> that kind of takes you around the county. We are, um, as Donna mentioned, so many different products that are grown here, not just one thing. So um, the the Blossom and Orchard map kind of shows um, what different things are growing just in this area. So pretty amazing. Mm, what a good way to explore Tulare County, too. You know, it's it to me, it's really amazing. Yeah. Every time we talk about this, I get... Like you guys are like the land of fertility. <laughs> it sounds weird, but I know we're going to spring. Yeah. But when you think about the high Sierra mountains, like you're in the Sierra Nevadas and you've got these giant sequoia trees, you know, the the biggest, <laughs> they're, they're giants, you know, so you can go yeah. up there. And you're, you know, literally jaw drop. Every time we go in there, I'm still in awe, like, wow. You know, these I think we do things so in big, big ways here. The, the largest tree up in the Sequoia National Park, and I think we, this morning someone was mentioning that eighty um, percent of the eighty um, percent of the citrus is, citrus is grown in Tulare County, and like ninety really? percent of lemons are. Or maybe it's California, but but regardless, a huge number of um, products that are grown here that make up a huge portion of the world's supply. It's just really amazing to me. See, this is why you're on the big blend because everything's big. <laughs> Tulare <laughs> County, it's a big experience. Exactly, you know, it, it really yeah. is this this experience that you can have. And what I love is that you have museums all throughout in all the cities, like Porterville. And Porterville was also known; um, they have their own flower, the iris. And I think Donette, that's where we started talking with you is about the iris when there used to be the. They still do the iris festival, or is that now the spring festival? I think what they it's done. called the spring festival now. Um, okay, but definitely you'll see a lot of iris blooming in downtown Porterville when you come to that in April. A mm. great event, lots of fun, family fun. But yes, absolutely, that um, has been the. City flower, gosh, I want to say back, oh, it was adopted in the 19, early 1960s, and mm. um, it's mm. just a, you know, beautiful area, you know, out there as well, uh, definitely uh, surrounded by even more farmland, <laughs> so that, I don't right. know, I, a lot I of kind of feel like the Ameri- 
a lot of citrus, absolutely, mm-hmm. and it is so fragrant in the springtime, just mm-hmm. driving into Porterville, because you're, if, depending on which route you take, most likely you're going to be passing citrus. I don't know if there's a way you can get there without happening that happening. Or olives. Um, <laughs> olives, ex- exactly, all types of different uh, beautiful uh, trees, you know, that mm. are blooming. But I really, truly love the smell of the citrus trees. It's mm. so fragrant. You know, you're going to well, smell that out in the air. It's beautiful. Well, Springville, mm. and well, I want to go back to citrus because Exeter has this wonderful, you know, you're talking about following a trail, you know, the Blossom Trail, Exeter, you can follow the mural, I mean, every community in Tulare County has murals and public art is, it abounds, you know, it's everywhere. Um, so every community has that. And, but I think Exeter really, they do such a good job on showcasing, you know, the old labels, the packing houses and the murals. And there's mm-hmm. that one with all the blossoms right in the heart of, you know, downtown Exeter. So that's something uh, to go check out as well. Um, for Exeter, and they have a great museum there too, uh, that you can go to. And, and what's so great about these, community museums too like porterville's one springville even has one um you go in is dinuba has a great one too where in tulare and yeah you all have good museums let's visalia has one you know you guys go in but you're finding out all the different people cultures families that have been farming and really uh, from what my understanding was a lot of people uh coming from different countries but also people that left the Dust Bowl and came over to your area and started growing. And um, it's just pretty amazing when you go to the museums and you see their life, you know, on display so that we can understand more and to understand um, the hard work they've done, right? You know, so you've got a great museum in Visalia that that people can go to and uh, right at Mooney Grove Park and go have a picnic afterwards too. But that's, that's a great one, Suzanne, yeah. for folks to go. Yeah, that's, Mm-hmm. That's a terrific one that talks about, like you said, the culture. And actually, there's sort of three components to that museum. The Red Barn it has the different cultures that settled here in the area and made their impact on agriculture here, um, really kind of diversified the products here by bringing their um, their their crops to the area. That kind of came out of my mouth wrong. But anyway, um, there is the... Um, original part of the museum that has a lot of Native American and Pioneer era relics. Um, One of the largest Native American basket collections is on display there. And then the outdoor area where they have um, a uh, houses and different buildings that have been moved onto the site that are, um, you know, historic in some way. And, um, and the the farm machinery that you can take a look at and see, you know, the evolution of of how these machineries um, really um, changed the face of agriculture and allowed us to become this, you know, huge powerhouse of agriculture here in Tulare County. Mm. I, I love it. Uh, Tulare, we got to talk about Tulare. And Tulare is interesting because there used to be a lake there too. And you go in the museum, they have the history of that and then all the different people again. But you have another big museum for kids. This is so cool for kids to learn about agriculture. Um, You want to tell everybody about that? Because you also have that big, talk about big. You have the World Ag Expo. Excuse us, everybody. (laughs) Move over. Oh, my gosh. We have so much coming up. I mean, we were just um, in a meeting chatting about that earlier today. Uh, We have World Ag Expo, and that happens and kicks off on the 13th of February. It is the largest uh, three-day exposition in the world, and we will welcome about 110,000 people to attend that event over that period of time. There are about 1,400 exhibitors that come to that event, and it is all things agriculture. I mean, truly a celebration of agriculture um, and, of course, the technology that comes into play with agriculture. And I learn so much every time I go to the event. We actually operate the International Business Center. So we will host anywhere from 50 to 75 different countries that will come in. Last year we had 53 different countries, um, representatives that checked in with us there. And this year I understand the numbers have already exceeded that. So looking forward to all of this celebration of agriculture. And whether you're in ag or not, it is definitely something to come and see. Everybody 
gets enthralled by standing next to those huge tractors and the other equipment that will be out there on exhibit as well as many different other exhibitor booths on different kinds of products and additional technology in ag. Anyway, that site where it is held is the International Acro Center and it is here in our community of Tulare. And on that site at their heritage complex, we have Ag Ventures Learning Center, which is an interactive museum um, for children and adults too because we enjoy playing in there as well. Um, attached to that is the actual Antique Farm Equipment uh, Museum, and you can go in and visit both of those sites. They're open um, any day of the weekday um, for people to come and view. But what's really cool about that Ag Ventures Learning Center is it's, it's a learning center. You're taking the children through, and adults too, to learn about ag production in our area. They have a fake cow there where you can pretend to milk the cow. You learn about that. There are videos to watch, and the kids can sit on small version tractors. There's also big tractors in there for them to check out. There is a farmer's market in there where kids can come in and learn about the produce from our region and actually have fun playing like farmer's market store and check out. It actually really beeps, by the way. I took my granddaughters there not too long ago again. And uh, just a wonder when you get in there. I mean, you're surrounded by all of this ag and all of this learning. And then to walk in and see the equipment. And again, there's one huge tractor that the kids can climb up into that's there. And they also have some other equipment, too, that may not necessarily be ag-related. Um, but there's an airplane you know, on display. There's a piece of a train. So it's a wonderful, fun place to get to explore. And I encourage people, when you're coming in um, to Tulare County, make sure you visit all of our museums. But definitely mm -hmm. make sure you hit the International Agri Center and take a look at that antique um, equipment museum museum, as well as Ag Ventures. And truly, Ag Ventures, while it is focused on youth, um, it's definitely something fun for all of us. And we always mm. learn something new when we go to that. Yeah, I agree. And the one thing I wanted to touch on with families and, and, you know, getting your kids excited and to understand where our food comes from, I think another great museum is in Visalia is the Imagine You Children's Museum. I wanted to be a kid, like seriously, just go play in there. Um, Suzanne, you've got to get a lot of families that are excited to have their kids, you know, be, be interactive, you know, so it's so cool, just oh, like yeah. Ag Ventures, having that interactive kind of museum. Yeah, and I think they've added some new exhibits since you were last here, so you'll have to come again to, to play like a kid. There's a okay. lot of fun um, activities there, indoor, both indoors and outdoors, that um, kids can be very interactive with climbing up in the treehouse and learning about little animals up there. There's the new um, shield exhibit that talks about all of the first responders so kids can pretend like they are um, I don't know, working in an ambulance or um, in the police car or the fire truck. And, you know, um, they have phones, pretend phones for the kids to practice calling 911 or whatever that looks like. So it's a really fun interactive. The kids just absolutely love it. Um, there is, of course, some agricultural exhibits there. They can, one of the ones I think is really fun is the um, sort and pack area. So they have some pretend oranges and limes and lemons that come down and the kids sort them out and they get sucked up through those, um, you know, the tubes that suck things up over overhead and drop them down into another area and they, they um, put them through the sorter and they pack them up. And so it's really learning a lot about um, how they can pick them from the tree, can put them through the sorter and, and how that those, those fruits and vegetables get to the grocery stores. And it's really a, a fun experience for them. Again, also cows, there's a little veterinary section um, that kids can pretend like they are veterinarians and, you know, just really explore um, like a kid with but with the curiosity um, and, um, you know, yeah, you know, just That's... with great curiosity, they can just explore so much. And touch things because normally in the museum, it's like, Shh, don't touch, you know. Yeah, um, absolutely. And, I, you know, I mentioned Dinuba too, and that uh, Dinuba was really big in regards to growing grapes for raisins. And they even have a festival every September, a uh, Raisin Day festival. Um, but one of the places, the museum there is fantastic. I mean, just really getting into, you know, family history, you know, farmers. And the other part was 
going to Naylor's. Um, Naylor's is this amazing, it's a little bed and breakfast on an actual farm. It's an organic family farm. And they have over 30 varieties of stone fruit and blackberries. Mm, and they're yeah, really cool yeah. because oh there's, yeah, you can stay on the farm. People go there to learn. They do tours. I think they also do a you pick it uh, seasonally. Yeah, you so, pick um, is great. Yeah, um, when the stone fruit is um, ripe and ready, just picking those that fruit right off the tree is amazing. Peaches, mm-hmm. nectarines, some um, apricots. Oh my gosh, it's it's amazing. I'm I'm getting hungry. This is a good healthy hungry. You know, this is good <laughs> stuff. And uh, the other one, uh, Woodlake. I want to touch on that. Woodlake has an amazing yeah, garden, Woodlake. the uh, botanical garden. And it's really, it's yeah. um, done with, you know, Manuel and Olga Jimenez uh, with Woodlake Pride Youth Volunteers. So they get the kids growing, but it's also a demonstration garden for folks yeah. that are going to grow something in their backyard to learn what you can grow. And it's pretty amazing. They do like a berry tasting every year. Mm-hmm. It's really yeah. amazing what they grow. It's really fun. And, you know, the thing with growing is that it's constantly changing. So if you've been there before, come again because it will be different than it was the first time you visited because they're they're constantly, um, well, obviously things are growing, but they're constantly planning new things and, and really exploring the world of gardening. It's, it's amazing. It's a great mm. um, exhibit, like you said, a, a great exhibit garden. And it's wheelchair accessible. So it's really easy to get around there. It's a good walk if you're walking. Uh, it's just beautiful. And it's well, great yeah. for kids. Yeah. It's, and you can taste. Well, the other thing I was going to mention, the other thing I was going to mention, you know, um, the Woodlake Botanical Garden and, and Nailers, um, at some of these places are great stops on your way into the national parks as you're, as you're heading in, you know, you can take a little morning, you know, get up early and, and take a little side trip, which is not far off of your, off the path to get into the park mm. and, and visit these places. So, you know, making that part of a, of the, your national park visit, um, really can enhance that trip and, and learn a little bit more about the, you know, the, the whole area around the national parks and forests. Mm. And Lindsay, I, I want to bring up Lindsay. He's not far from Woodlake and Porterville. And we want to touch on spring. This, I want to talk about Lindsay, but Springville, aren't they known for apples? Don't they have like an apple festival in Springville every year in May? Or was it May or August? I don't um, they know. Have but, it, actually, it's in the fall in okay. um, October. Oh, and okay. they make their famous apple pies and they sell a lot of pies during that event. And it's a whole festival event with all types of vendor booths and all things pie when you are mm. there. <laughs> apple pie, <laughs> I should say. Apples. Apples and pie. There you go. That's going to oh. be your big thing there with other food booths and different things to see. But definitely it is about the apples and it's mm. up there in the foothills of Springville. It's absolutely beautiful up there. Mm. Such a great time to be there up in the fall time. Yeah. And that's a gateway to Sequoia National Forest and Giant Sequoia National Monument too. So I'm um, just in putting that in there as Suzanne was saying about on your way to these parks and places. And um, also another place to go is Kawea Oaks Preserve because you can see wild grapes growing. And I'd never realized what I was looking at before. And, and um, it's just an interesting thing of, of learning. And Three Rivers has a great museum too, uh, for folks to go to yeah. and also see how, um, that they have like a Native American village showing how, you know, the Native Americans, the locals, the Yukots, um, lived, but also how they used acorns and ground them and use that. So we're talking about agriculture. Um, that's also another part of food is what the yeah, Native American, sure. uh, families, um, eat and, um, Ground up acorns. They had a new exhibit. Yeah, a new exhibit that opened called Native Voices. Um, and it's a really interesting look at, um, the Native American population in that area, um, you know, from yesteryear and today. And like you said, you know, that's the very first agriculture is learning how to, um, utilize the resources, local resources for their, mm. you know, survival, I guess, their day to day living. Mm. And the other thing going to, um, Lindsay. So when you go to the store and you see Lindsay Olives, this is the Lindsay we're talking about. Um, but I think they changed hands or something there. But there's a Super 8 there and you can see a giant mural, or like a, not a mural, a sculpture of an olive. Just saying, it's a fun place to go just to go see that <laughs> at the hotel. Um, but also, you know, you've got all these olive groves, you know, which is really cool. So there are locals doing olive oil and things like that. But um, that's where we went to family, uh, Ford Family Farms. And um, you know, what's interesting, we'll have to do a show on this sometime, is that the area has actually uh, got a lot of World War II history. A lot of the farmers, um, I know Farmer Bob, I know he's retired, but um, out in Ivanhoe, he actually had 
a watchtower. So they, you know, when we were worried about the nuclear war, you've got to think, um, you also, you know, you're on the Western coast, on the Pacific theater, what was happening in World War II. And so they were on the lookout um, out there. And so the farmers played an active role in World War II. And one of the places, uh, Ford family, uh, Ford Farms. So it's a place where you can take your kids and they can learn about goats and pigs and they rescue animals. And uh, so it's kind of like a petting place for animals. You know, if you want to go hang out with, you know, the cows and everything too, farm animals. But it was actually a 1950s movie set for Western movies back in the day. And it was also a landing site that was used by aircraft during World War II, which is pretty interesting. So I think you guys have a lot of cool history in your area, you know, um, from World War II, Native American history. We're going to talk about African-American history next month. Um, but you have a lot of history that is tied up in, in your farms that people can visit today, which is pretty cool to, for people to yeah, experience. Yeah, really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so everyone, discover the sequoias.com is the website to go to. Have I left anything out on events or anything? I know you've got your festival um, in Visalia coming up, uh, the spring, uh, 1852 Spring Fest, right? That's coming up at, yeah, a, at a brewery. Yeah. Ooh. In cool. March, yeah. So that's a, that's a fun um, kind of Italian with the blossoms and the orange blossoms. They have 1852 um, is a... Um, soccer facility but they also are a brewery and tap house so um tap room so it's a lot of fun and they have a big community festival everybody wears a particular outfit usually in the spring it's the white everybody wears white with an accent of orange in honor of the orange blossoms so that's a really fun event that'll be on march 30th this year cool cool Uh, and then we do want to Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was just going to say one of the things, too, we want to remind people of as well is um, in the springtime, you know, with all of the other events that are coming, I, I would just recommend everyone check out the website and link into the various communities because between um, rodeo events that are happening, we also have the California Antique Farm Equipment Show that happens over um, here in Tulare. We mentioned the Spring Fest um, in Porterville, and I know Dinuba has activities going on, Wood Lake, Exeter, Visalia. I mean, everybody has something uh, that's going on. And of course, we always remind everyone that when you're coming up here, um, go and check out Sequoia National Park and Mm -hmm. also uh, Sequoia National Forest and the giant Sequoia National Monument. Um, Just the beauty of this area is amazing. And on top of that, of course, we have lots of hotel rooms available for people to stay in. We have all types of shopping from your unique boutique. <laughs> you are type not going to come on. I know. I always have to mention shopping. shopping. I knew it. Well, I ha- we have to mention that. We ha- I feel like we have the best of all worlds because. <laughs> We know we have those unique smaller stores. We have antique stores. We have a lot of resale stores, too, where you can pick up some wonderful treasures. We have an outlet center here in our region as well and national brands. So pretty much you can grab everything that you need, enjoy the restaurants, and really savor the flavors of the region as well. We have a lot of uh, farm-to-table style restaurants as well as other types of restaurants that you would normally, you know, look to find in a community, but a true blend of restaurants hey, based blend. on the various different kinds of, you know, demographics of the community. So you're going to mm. find a lot of different really cool places to check out when you come into the community. Yeah, you're right. I mean, you've got Portuguese food, you've got Asian, mm-hmm. all kinds of Asian food. Um, you've got, you know, Mexican food. Oh my gosh. Uh, okay. I'm uh, homesick for California right now. There you go. I'm getting yeah, a little brand hungry. New, <laughs> we have to come and check out. We um, have a brand new French cafe opening up actually right Ooh. next door to the chamber and around the corner from that oh. is the Brazilian steakhouse. Oh. And, you know, the person who um, owns and runs the steakhouse and most of his staff, you know, they are from Brazil. <laughs> See, <laughs> so but that's, but getting that's very thing. authentic experiences in yeah, our region. Yeah, you know, agricultural areas have this, you know, bounty of good food, not only from what's grown there, but the people that are growing it open up restaurants because they want their food. Like if you're going to go working, you want, you want your food, you want good stuff, you know? So there's just so much history. Um, the agricultural communities, like we were talking about, you know, Manuel and Olga, 
um, you know, they, they were farm workers. They, they worked as kids on up. I mean, their story is incredible. Um, so I encourage you to go to Woodlake Botanical Garden and see if you can meet them because they're super nice. And they'll answer questions about anything <laughs> about growing and tell you their family story too. I mean, farmers, you know, and the people that work the farms with the farmers, um, it's a hard life and it goes by what's going on with the weather, um, you know, diseases, all of that. They have to worry about so much. And it's so important for us, you know, as society to support farmers and, and really respect them, give them the respect they, they deserve, which is a huge amount. And, um, so I think going and having these experiences also gives you education, learning about water and how they are working to, you know, do farming without using so much water. They're doing things that you may hear people yell about stuff on the news or whatever. But if you actually go to these places and talk to farmers, go to the farmers markets, you guys have awesome farmers markets, go to the farmers stands, talk about shopping. You could go in summertime, like you could buy all kinds of peaches and plums and oh my gosh, it's amazing. Um, but you can talk to the people and actually learn right from the people themselves doing the work. So um, I really encourage, especially for kids and families to go and check it out and go to the events. That's even the fun thing. So discover the sequoias.com uh, is the way to go, go to that website. Like Donette said, it'll link you into all the different communities and on their websites, you'll have all the event news, where to stay, what lodging wise uh, from vacation rentals and bed and breakfast to hotels, um, it's all there. But before we go real quick, Suzanne, uh, just an overview of Visalia. You guys have like all kinds of food going on, like all kinds, too, when it comes to multicultural flavors. Oh, yeah. Food trucks to five stars. That's what we like to say. Got lots of Ooh. different options. And, you know, the, the taco tour in downtown, so you can explore different um, tacos from different regions in Mexico. It's a, that's a lot of fun. Um, to you know, like I said, five star um, at the mm. Vintage Press Restaurant. To um, you know, just oh, good martinis great there food too. Trucks and all, everything in between. <laughs> We love it. We love it. So discover the sequoias dot com. The links in the show notes, and um, also shout out if you're going to the Sequoia National Park and Kings Canyon National Park, which is connected. Uh, fee free day is um, on uh, Martin Luther King Day is a fee free day if you want to go in, and um, you know that way it gives you more money to spend on good food. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, uh, thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Donette. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you for it's having been us. Great. Yeah, thank you so much. We look forward to welcoming everyone to Tulare County. Yep. Thank you for joining us here on Big Blend Radio's California Sequoia Country Show. New episodes air every first Thursday at 4 p.m. Pacific Time. You can keep up with the show at BigBlendRadio.com, but also plan your Tulare County escape. Go to DiscoverTheSequoias.com.